let's have a look at today's topic, which I thought because some people are, not everybody, so don't worry if this is not you, some people are getting close to the end of the course. Some people are coming close to doing some progression tests. Okay, and so I thought it might be a nice idea if today we looked at a sample of a progression test. Okay, um, so this is not a progression test that is in the course. This is one that is outside of the course. And I thought it would just be nice to um, go through it and to get a feel for the kinds of things that you might get in an exam or a progression test, um, depending on where you are in the course. So generally, progression tests reflect the kinds of ideas that you'll come across in the exam as well. All right, so um, that's why it's good to do the progression tests that are in the course. They form part of our assignments. Um, but also at the end of the course, you will write an exam at some point. And this is just nice to go over and reveal the kinds of questions that you can expect to get in an exam situation. All right, so let's go down. Um, this is, what year is this? This is a, I think it's a 2011, yes, 2011 progression test. Okay, for stage seven. So that's um, round about the start of foundation one, or near the middle of foundation one, okay? So section A, there's two sections. There's a reading section and a writing section. The first section is always section A, the reading section. And what you have to do in the reading section is pay very close attention to the text that you are given. Okay, so um, it'll tell you what to do. It'll give you instructions. It'll say, read the extract from an information text. So this is a specific kind of text. And if you've been working through your textbooks, or your course books, you should have come across this idea of information texts, texts that provide you with information, on the Komodo dragon, and then answer the questions that follow. Okay, and can I just say for those of you who just joined, please make sure that you say hi in the chat, in the chat box, so that I've got a record of your attendance. Okay, great. All right, so let's have a look at this text. Now remember, when you first get a text, you're going to read through it once, just for meaning, and then you always read through it again a second time around to pick up the detail that you're going to need in order, in order to answer the question. Okay, so you always read a text twice. Okay, read twice. Komodo dragon. Right, so now we know what it's about. Always look at the title of a text. Komodo dragons are the world's heaviest living lizards. They can grow to a length of over three meters with an average length of two and a half meters and a weight of 91 kilograms. Okay, so that's pretty heavy for a lizard. Females are usually under 2.5 meters and weigh about 68 kilograms. The Komodo dragon's keen sense of smell, if aided by favorable wind, enables them to seek out carrion. And here they've got a little star. So usually when you see that, it means that there's going to be an explanation beneath. So if you come down a little bit, there's a glossary. Okay, and this is where you can get an explanation of words, kind of like a dictionary. What is carrion? Well, it's dead and decaying flesh. So that is what they like to eat. Lovely, delicious. I hope all of you have had breakfast. Okay, so um, the Komodo dragon's keen sense of smell, if aided by favorable, favorable wind, enables them to seek out carrion up to eight and a half kilometers away. Wow. Despite their size, Komodos are fast moving and agile. They can climb trees and are good swimmers. Okay, and then we have a nice picture of the Komodo dragon. Let's continue. Their teeth are laterally compressed with serrated edges, resembling those of flesh eating sharks. They have about 60 teeth that are replaced frequently and that are positioned to cut out chunks of their prey. Komodos have a highly flexible skull, which allows them to swallow large pieces of their food. A Komodo's mouth is full of virulent bacteria, so it's quite serious bacteria. So even if their prey survives the original attack, it will die of infection later. So the dragon is pretty much guaranteed a meal. In addition, recent research has found that Komodos have a venom gland which is important in disabling their prey. So they're quite formidable, these dragons. Young dragons, up to 0.75 meters in length, live in trees and eat insects, birds, eggs, small mammals, and other reptiles. However, 
they descend from the trees for carrion. So it's most likely carrion's not going to be up in the trees, it's going to be down on the ground. So they really like their carrion, in other words. Okay, so, um, let me just press the save button quickly. Good. All right, so this is the extract. And then you would read it again. Thank you for those that are, of you that are saying hi. I'm glad that we're keeping a record of your attendance. Thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs> okay, so let's read it through. We're going to read through this another time. And I'm sorry, it's just so that when we go through the questions, you're not going to be too surprised by the answers because you should be absorbing this information. As I said, if this were you writing the progression test, you would have to read it twice anyway. So the Komodo dragon. Komodo dragons are the world's heaviest living lizards. They can grow to a length of over three meters with an average length of 2.5 meters and weight of 91 kilograms. Females are usually under 2.5 meters and weigh about eight kilograms. Okay, so you see the difference there. And we know that we're dealing with an information test because you're getting very specific facts and figures here, okay, straight away. The Komodo dragon's keen sense of smell. Look what we're focusing on here, the smell. If aided by favorable wind, enables them to seek out carrion, which is their main food source, up to eight and a half kilometers away. Despite their size, Komodos are fast moving and agile. They can climb trees and are good swimmers. Let's go down to the next paragraph. Their teeth are laterally compressed with serrated edges resembling those of flesh eating sharks. And the next few things that are um, described about the Komodo can also be applied to sharks, by the way, to flesh eating sharks. They have about 60 teeth that are replaced frequently and that are positioned to cut out chunks of their prey. Komodos have a highly flexible skull, which allows them to swallow large pieces of their food. <clears throat> a Komodo's mouth is full of virulent bacteria, so even if their prey survives the original attack, it will die of infection later. In addition, recent research has found that Komodos have a venom gland, which is important in disabling their prey. And then the conclusion, young dragons, up to 0.75 meters in length, live in trees and eat insects, birds, eggs, small mammals, and other reptiles. However, they descend from the trees for carrion. Did you notice that on the second reading, you're taking in a bit more information, you're a bit more aware of things. Forgive me, I have a bit of a cold, so I'm just gonna drink a bit of water. So the second reading just makes the details stand out a little bit more, all right? <clears throat> so, um, and also you could annotate, you could, you could underline, you could circle words as you go through the extract. So that also helps your eye to focus on certain concepts to prepare you for the questions that are coming up. Let's go down to the kinds of questions you can expect to get on, on this, in this kind of task. Which two facts about Komodo dragons are correct? Okay, so what, what's correct? You need to tick two boxes. They can move quickly and easily. They never go in water. <clears throat> they always live on the ground. They can detect scent very effectively. Well, now that we've read it twice, excuse me, I'm just gonna clear my throat. <laughs> Now that we've read the text twice, we have a better idea of the sorts of things Komodo dragons can do. And if we're going to tick the two, we're going to say they can move quickly and easily, right? We saw that. We saw that they can move quickly and easily. We saw that they are good swimmers. We saw that they can climb trees, so these two are not right, and that they can detect scent very effectively, yes, from very far distances. So there, if you tick the two boxes, you would get two marks, okay? Let me not um, circle. All right, number two says, write a suitable heading for the third paragraph. So let's go back up to the text and look at that third paragraph. And look, what was the focus here? The focus was on how Komodo dragons are very similar to sharks. Um, the way that they are, uh, the way that they eat, the way that they attack their prey, the way that they can swallow large chunks of their prey. So I think I would. You could do something like compare it to sharks or um, because the description goes on to show you other things about the Komodo, the virulent bacteria or the venom gland, maybe you could have things like the formidable dragon, for example, or a formidable predator because just like sharks are predators, they are also predators. So um, I do have a mark scheme that we could look at. And they will generally suggest the kinds of answers you could give. So in theory, um, if for question two, you could have anything like, 
feeding, how Komodos feed, catching their prey, the Komodo's mouth, or any sort of um, comparison, I think, remember, the marker doesn't have to stick to the mark scheme. This is just a general guideline for your marker. Okay, so um, anything um, like um, the shark dragon kind of thing, I would accept that. Anything creative. Accept any suitable word or phrase which focuses on how Komodos eat or feed or their mouth. Do not accept teeth because it's not just about the teeth, okay? It's about feeding in general, how they feed. So that's the kind of thing that you could um, that you could use as a heading. All right. So um, let's see. Which one should we use? Let's choose one from their suggestions. How Komodo's feed? Okay. We'll we'll make it. We'll keep it straightforward and boring. How Komodo's feed? All right. So that's what you would have. And I have capitalized every word. Sorry if that's hard for you to, to, to uh, recognize, but um, I've capitalized every word because generally in titles, you can do that. Although obviously this would be a subheading, so you don't have to, you wouldn't be marked down on it. So you get a mark for that. Now, then the next part is write three ways in which Komodos can kill their prey. Okay, and we've kind of been focusing on that already. Um, now, what is it testing here? It's testing your close reading skills. How well are you paying attention to the extract? Okay, so I'm going to give you a chance to put forward one suggestion. Doesn't matter if they're all different suggestions. Um, some of you please give me suggestions on at least one of the three ways that Komodos kill their prey based on this paragraph, okay? So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to type something. Any suggestions? Good, nice, okay. A venom gland that disables the prey, yes. That's right. They can kill them with the bacteria in their mouth, absolutely, yes. Okay, excellent, so we've already got two. We've got the venom gland, which we saw here. We saw the virulent bacteria, okay. And what else? What about around the beginning here? Okay, no more suggestions coming through for now. Well, oh yes, okay, the flexible skull, excellent, yes. Because this flexible skull allows them to swallow large pieces of their food. So that they can take chunks out of prey, essentially. With, between the structure of their teeth and their skull, they can take chunks out of a prey. Um, so these are the kinds of answers you could give. Let's look at what Cambridge would give. So they can use their teeth. Um, and I would say that the skull thing can still apply this movable skull, because that must give them an advantage in some way. So remember, this is just what Cambridge is suggesting as answers. They use their teeth, they have very little bacteria in their mouth, and they have a venom gland for disabling their prey. And if you had three of those correct, you would whoop, whoop, get two marks. Yes, Cambridge is very strange in the way that they allocate their marks. So in order to get those two marks, you wanna make sure that you answer the question given. Just like in assignments, the way that you're given a very specific topic, you want to make sure that when you're answering questions, you pay attention to the question, to the question given. So if you're going to, you must list three things, they must be correct, and then you'll get two marks. But if you only got one or two of these, you'd get one mark. Okay, so they mark in a very strange way, but that's what they want. Okay, so let's go down. So you would, you would fill all of that in and you'd get your two marks, hopefully. Okay. Now, number four, combine these sentences into one sentence using so and which. Use correct punctuation. So a lot of students always see this part, the so and the which, and then they forget about the punctuation. Now you've got to earn two marks. So essentially what that means is it has to be perfect, okay, uh, if you want those two marks. So let's look at the sentence, sentence of they've given. A Komodo dragon is a large lizard. It can grow up to a length of three meters. It is one of the world's heaviest living lizards. Why do we combine this into one complex sentence? It's not a simple sentence. It's not a compound sentence as we saw in last week's live lesson. It is a complex sentence. Well, we have the word so in which. A Komodo dragon is a large lizard, so it can grab to a length of three meters. 
a Komodo dragon is a large lizard, which can grow up to? Right, so we're going to use which. So we're going to use which here. Which can grow to a length of three meters. Okay, so we have a main idea. So now we want to add a comma. Comma. We put a comma. Obviously, you'd write this out here, okay? Comma, it, and this would not be a capital. Uh, this would not be a, sorry. No, I'm talking rubbish here. We still have to use so. Okay, so let's do that. So, it is one of the world's heaviest living lizards. And obviously, it would no longer be capitalized because it's part of your sentence. All right, so you'd have a Komodo dragon. It's a large lizard, which can grow to a length of three meters, comma. So, it is one of the world's heaviest living lizards, full stop. And that would give you your two marks. Okay, so let's just check that in the answer scheme. Make sure there's nothing too funny going on. Yes, okay, so Komodo dragon is a large lizard which can grow to a length of three meters. They've put two commas here. So it is one of the world's heaviest living lizards. I chose the second option. A Komodo dragon is a large lizard which can grow to a length of three meters, comma. So it is one of the world's heaviest living lizards. So what they're showing you is that you could have the two commas if you wanted to. Okay, that, that is also acceptable. Um, if you just used if you just use which and so and no commas, not a single comma anywhere, then you would get um, only one mark. But if you used a comma or some commas, you would get the two marks. Okay. So interesting stuff there. Let's move on down. So remember, punctuation is important. Number five, read the sentence beginning, despite their size in line five. What does this tell us? And we've got to tick one box. So let's go up to line five. And they've actually marked it for you. That's why there's these funny numbers on the side of the text. Okay, sometimes it's marks, okay, but um, it shows you the line number, okay? Let's read the sentence. Despite their size, Komodos are fast moving and agile. Okay. So despite their size, Komodos are fast moving and agile. So uh, what does this tell us about the Komodos? That the Komodo size helps it to move so fast? Not really. The Komodo is so big because it can move so fast, that doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't expect such a large animal to be able to move so fast. Yes, correct. And that's the word despite, because it's about expectation, isn't it? It's linked to this idea of expecting something. So despite their size, they can move very quickly, they can move so fast. And there you get your one mark. All right, so let's move on down. Which of these words from the third paragraph has a prefix? All right, and you have to tick one of the options. Is it resembling? Is it infection? Or is it disabling? Okay, now, so, what this is testing is whether you know grammar, right? Um, so do you know your grammar? What is a prefix? I'm going to tell you now. A prefix is a word or a letter or a number placed before another word, okay? So it's part of something, part, um, part word and uh, connected to a full word. So it comes in the front of a word. Um, can you give me your suggestions here in the chat box? Which one would you go for? Which option should we tick? Any suggestions? Okay, good, we've had some suggestions. Disabling, infection. Oh, okay, you're asking, um, there's a question that one of the students is asking if I can go back to the paragraph to see. Now the paragraph won't help you to determine which one of these words contains a prefix. By looking at the word, you should already be able to tell that there's a prefix in the word. It's nothing to do with the paragraph, okay? So just letting you know in case you haven't come across prefixes before. All right, so I'm going to put you out of your misery. 
and the way to work out a prefix and well done to um, the student, <laughs> no problem, well done to the student who got this right. It is, ta-da, disabling, <laughs> okay, dis, dis, okay, why? Well, why is it not re or why is it not in? Because, you know, these could be prefixes, those little short letters that are um, put at the beginning of a word to change its meaning. Well, if we take re away, what would you have? You'd have sembling. What does sembling mean? Doesn't make sense. So this is not a prefix. This is a full word on its own. It resemble. Resemble means to, to look like something else. Okay, so it makes sense. But therefore, it's not a prefix if we take the first few letters away. What about infection? Well, if we take in away, what is fection? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. It is a full, complete word a full complete idea, infle infection. But disabling, what is the root of these words, of this word? Well, able, isn't it? You are able to do something, or sometimes you are unable to do something, or sometimes you can enable people, or some, something can disable people, okay? So all of these are prefixes on the word able. Does that make sense now, guys? So well done to students that got that right. And I'm, but thank you so much for trying. You've got to try. Even if we get it wrong, it doesn't matter. We are trying. We are, we are thinking. And we have to look at why we got it wrong. And that's how you learn. So I really do appreciate you contributing. Never be afraid to contribute or never be afraid to make a mistake. This is how we learn. Okay. So number seven. There are three sentences in the second paragraph. One of the sentences can be rewritten using brackets. Rewrite the sentence using brackets. So three sentences in the second paragraph. One of those sentences can be written using uh, brackets. And here they're testing to see if you know how to use brackets. Okay. So let's look at the second paragraph. The Komodo dragon's keen sense of smell, if aided by favorable wind, enables them to seek out carrion up to eight and a half kilometers away. Despite their size, Komodos are fast moving and agile. They can climb trees and are good swimmers. So, how would we, where would we put the brackets? What time are we on? Oh, we're on 9.25 already. Okay, let's just look at the answers that they have suggested. Okay, so, the Komodo dragon's keen sense of smell, and you see they've put this in brackets, if aided by favorable wind, enables them to seek out carrion up to eight and a half kilometers away. Okay, so we're focusing on the first sentence. Sorry, I misread the question. So this section here in brackets, if aided by favorable wind, if you took that out, for example, the sentence would still make sense. The Komodo dragon's keen sense of smell enables them to seek out carrion up to eight and a half kilometers away. That's why extra information is given in brackets. It can be taken out. It does not have to be there, but we put it in to give that extra information. So um, this helps you to find out a little bit more about the Komodo dragon. And if we look at the original, I think the original had this section um, separated by commas. Uh, the Komodo dragon's keen sense of smell, comma, if aided by favorable wind, comma, enables them to seek out carrion. Do you see how those commas already act as a kind of parentheses, a sort of thing that might bracket off extra information, parentheses. Emphases, okay, um, they already function this way, so that's how you could detect that you could, in theory, just use brackets there. You could also have used dashes, dash, dash, all of these kind of parenthetical information um, structures aid more information to a main idea. Okay, we've got three minutes left. I'm so sorry, we are running out of time as usual. So you would get a mark for that. So you have to make sure you copy it word for word and you put your brackets in clearly as the answer showed. Find an adverb in the first paragraph which shows that not all female Komodo dragons are the same size. So we're going to the first paragraph. We're looking for an adverb. Adverbs describe, generally they describe verbs. Like she ran quickly, okay? She ran slowly. Those are ver uh, adverbs describing the verb. Or they can also describe other adverbs or other adjectives even, okay? So it's all about giving you more information about verbs, adverbs, or adjectives. Once again, testing your grammar skills. So coming up 
to the first paragraph, we need to keep uh, ideas to focus on females. Females are usually under two and a half meters and weigh about 68 kilograms. Where is the adverb? Can anybody spot it? Females are usually under two and a half meters and weigh about 68 kilograms. Good, yes, usually. Well done. Usually, because it is um, describing something. It's linked to an idea and it's quantifying it. Usually, normally, these kind of things, they quantify something. So um, females are usually smaller than males, essentially. Okay, so you'd have to write usually. And usually adverbs end in ly, okay? Um, you can also have adverbial phrases, um, but we'll get into that later because we're running out of time. Let's just do the last question since we're on. Find a word in the first paragraph which shows that only some Komodo dragons grow to a length of over three meters, okay? Only some Komodo dragons. So, let's go there. Komodo dragons are the world's heaviest living lizards. They can grow to a length of over three meters with an average length of two and a half meters and a weight of 91 kilograms. Don't worry about the last bit, we've already looked at that. Which word shows us the possibility of them growing to a certain length? Can, good, yes. They can grow to a length. They don't have to, they always, but they certainly can. So that shows that only some of them do, not all of them. All right, so there you get your one and your one. Okay, we are on our final, final minute. I'm just going to have a quick show of this to you. You would also have to read the rest of this extract and answer the questions, and then you'd have to do a summary. So this is the kind of thing you can expect in an exam or in any of your progression tests. So you are tested on grammar, you are tested on close reading skills, you're tested on your ability to write a summary in your own words, very important. Okay, 